This is KGW News at 11. New tonight, a Portland City Commissioner has his own plan for changing Portland City government. Welcome to KGW News at 11. I'm Christelle Kumwe. Mingus Maps opposes the current charter reform package heading to voters in November. He plans to push his version next year if their current proposal does not pass. His ideas include single member district, a smaller council and a stronger mayor. And that's according to the Oregonian. His plans are expected to be made public on Monday. Under Portland's current system, commissioners are elected citywide and serve both as legislators and administrators. In November, voters will decide a plan that would expand the city council and leave administration to a new city manager position. Switching gears now to the Portland Marathon, which was back in full force today with runners and supporters filling the Rose City for the 50th anniversary of the race. Now tonight, Tim Gordon takes us to the big event with a start and finish line along the waterfront. All set before dawn and everything ready to go for the 50th Portland Marathon. And then a sunrise start with the front of the pack leading the way. The marathoners up for 26.2 miles across bridges and through 20 Portland neighborhoods and a large contingent of half marathoners too. They all had support, including encouraging signs and, of course, the cowbells. This woman really had the bell ringing down. We're super pumped up right now. Energy uh, runners and supporters are out in droves. It's, uh, it's wild out there. It's a lot of fun, and uh, we're feeling great. As marathon runners came back by at the eight-mile mark, they got a boost from the crowd. And not long after, the top half-marathon runners crossed the finish line. Our half-marathon winner, Chris Maxwell. 109.12 unofficially. Both the male and female first place winners, Portlanders, tuning up for a California full marathon later this year. Chris Maxwell. Having it be a local race for me is just easy logistically, getting to sleep in my own bed. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a good tune-up race. And Kara Welling, who is originally from the Southwest. No rain, beautiful sun, a great time. Is it too warm for you? No, I'm from Arizona, so it's not too warm here for me. <laughs> In the two hour and 37th minute, marathon man Matt Spear went around the winner's tape, but still took first place. It's hot, man. Uh, that's about all I can say. Good, a lot of good people out and friends and family on the course. and. Uh, uh, coming, came in from Seaside, so not used to the warm weather, but uh, yeah, good vibes and, and good times. But one thing you realize when you come out to a marathon like this is that everybody has a story. We don't have time to tell them all, but it is certainly great to see all these people coming across the finish line. In all, about 7,000 runners racing today, an inspiring time in the city, and good to see the Portland Marathon back to full force. Tim Gordon, KGW News. Now, meteorologist Joe Ranier is joining us today. And Joe, I was out there. It was quite hot. But fall is, uh, those fall temperatures are not too far behind, right? Well, Maybe? actually, we're going to be <laughs> seeing another run of sunny and warm conditions. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, highs right around the mid 80s heading into the early part of the work week. And, you know, we're not going to be seeing much of a cool down. Right now, we're looking at temperatures very comfortable out there. Upper 60s in a few locations out in Forest Grove. Uh, the Portland International Airport, you're still seeing a temperature of 70 degrees and down in Sherwood, you're looking at a temperature of 62 at this hour and along the coast, a little bit cooler in the mid to the upper 50s. Astoria is at 55 degrees. You'll definitely be seeing uh, that uh, fog roll in late tonight and into tomorrow. We'll start things off the Oregon beaches for your Monday morning. But uh, meanwhile, throughout the uh, metro area, we're seeing a lot of sunshine and with that sunshine will be some warm temperatures. We got very close to seeing record breaking temperatures. The only place that we saw a new record was over in Troutdale. You saw a high of 88 degrees. The record uh, for Portland for today is 90. We got close to it at 88 degrees, but a lot of upper 80s, 90 degrees for October 2nd. And yeah, we're not going to be seeing any evidence of any changes where we should be for this time of year. But uh, October is already going to be uh, on the warm side. And as we look at what we should be seeing, on average, October gives us maybe a one day if we're lucky with temperature right around 80 degrees. We're already at two. And for the last two days, we've been seeing a temperature of 86 and 88 degrees. And get this, the record is six days, and we could break that record uh, heading into the end
end of next weekend. Now we could easily see uh, temperatures 80 or above at least four or five days uh, heading into your work week. And right now we're seeing some very pleasant conditions over Newport at 55 degrees, although mostly cloudy skies. You travel in a little, a little bit. We're looking at a temperature of 70 degrees for Stell with clear skies. I know a lot of people want to see the changes, but I for one kind of like the sunny and warm conditions. You're going to have to wait several days. Uh, basically, the next uh, uh, seven to 10 days are going to be nothing but sunny and warm conditions. I'll talk about what we could be seeing for the later part of this month coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Joe. All right, we have a traffic update for you tonight. Both directions of 99 East between I-205 freeway ramps are closed. The road was shut down about an hour ago and won't reopen until about 2 a.m. tomorrow morning. ODOT planned the closure to move equipment for the I-205 improvement project. To see other planned closures, you can go on the website i205corridor.org. We're in a war that nobody told us about. More than 50 people had their car tires slashed on Saturday. Now this is video of the aftermath as rows of cars are now stuck in the Roseway neighborhood. Tonight, Portland police are asking for your help to catch whoever is responsible. All the while, pictures and videos of the alleged suspect are circulating online. Blur Best has our story. Cars resting on rims was a common sight in the Roseway neighborhood Sunday morning. To my car, like with all the neighbors down our street, stabbed, slashed. Mike Hill's car is one of more than 50 targeted in a recent string of vandalism. That's my wife's work car. If they did it again tonight, she would, she'd have to wait a month before I could get another set of tires. A Portland police first responded Saturday morning to a vehicle with slashed tires on Northeast 72nd Avenue, only to find the damage was widespread, reaching cars parked several blocks away on Northeast 77th. Later, they found 20 more vandalized vehicles in the neighborhood west of Roseway Heights Middle School. We're in a war that nobody told us about. These are critical times, hard to deal with. What's Portland, what is up with Portland? Do you have any idea why someone would target this neighborhood? Yeah, absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's horrible. It's like, it's so senseless. Molly Ennis woke up Saturday to a threat of texts from neighbors saying their tires had also been slashed. So I was like, I'm going to go out and check my car. Thank God mine had been spared. I had just gotten new tires on it. But others aren't so lucky and now left with a large bill. My friend who had a truck and a car, um, their tires slashed. It was over $2,200. This photo of the alleged suspect is now circulating on social media. What was in his mind? That's the thing I would like to know. What was in his mind? Could we have helped him? On some of these cars with the tires slashed were handwritten notes threatening neighbors if they called the city. This leaving some concerned and ultimately confused. Yeah, people are having these notes left on their car and it sounds like, you know, haha, the cops aren't even going to do anything, even if you try to report it. They're not too threatened about it. The city of Portland needs to grapple with these things in a kind of an intelligent way rather than reactionary. Portland police are still investigating. They're asking the victims to file police reports. And within a few days, each victim will get documents to help with insurance claims. They're also asking for any video of the suspects. Yeah, I think people are feeling in the neighborhood are feeling pretty unsafe and pretty left out on our own. It's a shared discomfort, but one that's bringing unity to this corner of the city. All of these neighbors, when they found out what happened, they all came together. They all helped each other out. They all helped us get, get our tires fixed, tore our cars away. They all came to each other's aid. That was impressive. That's the Portland I know. Portland police say people should keep reporting what happened. They say it will help with future prosecutions since it takes a lot of evidence and documentation with vandalism cases like this where there are multiple victims. In Northeast Portland, Blair Best, KGW News. 87 people are dead after Hurricane Ian slammed into the U.S. on Wednesday. Tonight, rescue efforts are still ongoing and officials warn that the death toll, death toll could rise. In Florida, winds reach 150 miles per hour. Homes are wrecked and cars submerge in the flooding. Right now, nearly a million homes and businesses are without power in the state. Ian has since been downgraded to a post-tropical cyclone and hit the Carolinas. 
Tonight, Brendan Lewis from our National Verified Team looks into how often major hurricanes have hit the United States. Category 5 hurricanes are the strongest storms on the Saffir Simpson scale. They have winds in excess of 157 miles per hour and can cause widespread destruction. Hurricane Ian made landfall Wednesday with winds of 155 miles per hour, just shy of Category 5 status. This prompted people on social media to ask how many times a hurricane of that magnitude has hit the U.S. So let's verify. Have only four Category 5 strength hurricanes hit the mainland U.S.? Our sources are the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the University of Miami's Tropical Atlantic Headquarters. More than 270 Atlantic hurricanes have hit the U.S. since record-keeping began in 1851. Most were considered minor hurricanes, but NOAA says there were four storms that reached Category 5 strength when they made landfall on the mainland. The first was the Labor Day hurricane in 1935 that hit the Florida Keys. Then there was Hurricane Camille in Mississippi in 1969, Andrew in 1992 south of Miami, and Michael in 2018 along the Florida Panhandle. So, yes, there have only been four Category 5 strength hurricanes to hit the mainland U.S. There were also additional Category 5 storms that hit the U.S. territories of Puerto Rico or the U.S. Virgin Islands. Just because a storm isn't a Category 5 doesn't mean it can't cause significant damage. Hurricane Katrina was a Category 5 storm, but weakened to a Category 3 by the time it made landfall near New Orleans in 2005. It remains the nation's costliest hurricane. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis.